In this video, we're going to talk about auxiliary views. Auxiliary views are used to show circular features and other features in such a way that their true dimensions are clearly visible, as in they are one to one, or sorry, that they are showing at proper scale. Whenever you rotate a shape, a circle becomes more and more like an ellipse and it becomes harder and harder to assess its true dimensions. Conversely, when we look at something straight on, it's very easy to see how it is a circle and what diameter it will be. So I'm going to throw a dimension on here. And this one is diameter 20. Flip around to the other side, we have another hole, also diameter 20. But when we look at these from the orthogonal views, it becomes very, very hard to see what in fact is going on. So we're going to turn this into 2D, and we're just going to see how we can do an auxiliary view. Our 2D model starts like this, and honestly, from none of these drawings can actually get a really good sense of the diameter of the holes. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste. In order to do so, we'll go Control C, Control V, drag over that principal view, and now I'm going to select Auxiliary on the home ribbon, and you'll see this line will snap into the feature, and I'll be able to drag out an Auxiliary view. To repeat, we're going to the home ribbon, Auxiliary, selecting the line we wish to we wish to flip on and then dragging out the feature now right now this looks kind of icky nice technical term yes but we can drag and drop parts of the text to clean it up and just make it a little easier to see there we go in this drawing the direction of the arrows is the direction along which your eye is looking. So your eye is over here and you've rotated the object so that you can clearly see that face. The next piece that's challenging but very useful is to be able to set up the dimensions. And for this I'm going to be using distance between and very particularly the orientation I want is to use a dimension axis. This is critical for this next step. The piece with dimension axis is to come over here to this icon, distance between dimension axis, and we're going to set the dimension axis. So I'm going to choose a line. And now when I go and grab my features, the lines are lined up. Um, with the rotation of this axis. The uh, dimension axis here will transfer not only from one view to another, but it also even transfer from one page to another. Finally, we have center lines and center marks. Now, normally a center mark would be horizontal and vertical, and it would appear straight up and down. But for an auxiliary view, this doesn't look quite right, and in fact, it will cause us a lot of problems when we try and line up with our dimensions. The trick here with the center mark is we want to change it to use dimension axis, having set that dimension axis, and now it'll be orientated with our drawing. For the center lines and center marks, we can choose by two points, or we can choose by two lines, which tends to be more useful. And this will calculate the average between two lines. Be sure to select the line and not the points. So one, Okay, one and two, there we go. One, 
and 2. And again, I am not selecting the points, but rather the lines. When I select the points, annoying things happen. If I have by two points, I can grab any two points on the object and create a center line between them. This is handy, but often we don't have a midpoint for where that center line is. So, quick recap. Um, auxiliary views are used to take surfaces that don't look true or uh, to scale and reorientate them so you can easily measure them. Once you've done so, you go into either small dimension or distance between and you change the orientation to use dimension axis and then choose this smart dimension axis to set the angle in question. There we go.